I am very skeptical. Illustrations by me. So lately I have seen people talking about these Paul Rubens professional watercolor paint. They're saying that it's 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 just like all the other professional lines. It's just it's so shocking. We thought they were going to be not as professional, but they turned out to be professional. I know, I don't have any kind of experience compared to the people that are saying this. Some of the biggest art YouTubers in the community are saying these are wonderful, they're amazing, they're surprising. So I picked up the big, first of all, I don't mind pink. This color makes me want to vomit. And you open it up and it has this little, this little cloth thing so nothing gets scratched. Very professional, I understand. Then it has, oh look, this is a propaganda sheet. I don't think, I can't read any of that. Can anyone tell me what that says? I, I don't understand any of it. I'm assuming that's a swatch card. I can't understand what colors are supposed to go where. So I'm not using this. Even the propaganda sheets, nothing is in English. I don't even know what colors those are. I don't know anything about this set. I have no idea what's going on here. Okay. It appears that on the bottom of these little pans here, they do have something. They have some kind of English there. So that I can understand what I'm working with. Otherwise, I would have no idea. I'm going to unbox all the chiclets. I'm going to put them in order that I would use them. I'm probably going to hate many of the colors because that's just how it is with me in sets. This is, I could have had the smaller, uh, they had the smaller sets. There's the A set and the B set. I got just got both of them because there was like a $30 coupon on it. So I got it fairly inexpensive. I don't like that they're half pans and I really don't like that they are not tube paints in this set. I, I, I know I could have gotten some tube paints, but I wouldn't have gotten this whole set. It wouldn't have been all these things. So I, I usually take this out. I don't usually keep this in here. I take it out and then I put magnets in and I do this. But first I'm going to have to scrub and sand and destroy the whole outside of this and repaint it. But for now, I've got another tin to put it in that's just as big. Or I may just pick a different smaller pan and put these in the smaller pan and just pick the ones that I actually like because I know I'm not going to use all these. I know that there's a ton of colors. I guarantee you, there. it looks like there is a ridiculous amount of yellows in here. I'm probably only going to pick one or two. We'll see. I'm going to swatch these all out, then I'll do a painting. You give me your opinion too when you're looking at these. Tell me what you think of them. All right, if I say anything stupid, I apologize. You're going to have to correct me. Don't worry, I know you will anyway. There's people always correcting me in the comments. And that's fine. I understand where you're coming from. Sometimes I want to correct other people, but I just, I don't do it. You do it. That's okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. Well, this is going to be a marathon. Let's get to it. All right, so I've got everything unwrapped here. Everything is here. Now, these stickers are kind of weird. They, so, I, I almost enjoyed it, but... You see how the stickers, how much stuff is on the... There's a lot of paint on there. There's there's just a lot of paint on there. But anyway, on the side, it does tell you... So on the front, it tells you... Yeah, let me get this correct here. So on the front, it tells you the name. And then on this side, it at least... What I can make out is a pigment number. And then there's a single number there, which I believe is the light fastness, because it matches up on a lot of the colors of what I expect. But I didn't leave the stickers on the side like I did with the other paints. Someone did point out that eventually those stickers will get disgusting on the side of these paints as they get wet and used. And uh, yeah, maybe it's not the best way to do it if you want to write it on the side. So I usually write the name of the paint on the side like that so that I know what it is and then I put the brand so I know which brand it is. You can go all around and put on the light fastness and the pigments if you want to. I didn't do that here, but I didn't mark any of these. I'm just going to go by the sheet that I paint out and that's how I'll know what's where. Okay, so I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, cause I'm complaining about all the information not being in English and you're gonna say typical US, you just have to have everything just catered to you. But let me explain here. These are marketed to me. 
So if they're marketed to me, you would expect them to at least have the information that I'd be looking for so that I could understand what I'm buying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that I understand it's a Chinese company. I have no problem with that. Whatever it is, it is. But at least cater to me a little bit. There's a lot of other Chinese companies too. They just tell you what everything is. Just tell me. I don't know any of that information. What the light fast. I know I know the light fastness. That I do know. Uh, look at that. I made a mark. Anyway, I, I know what the light fastness is. I know what the pigment is. But I don't know if it's uh, transparent or if it's granulating. I'm going to have to go by my own experience with that pigment. I did not swatch out a... a uh, a line for all these because really honestly it doesn't really matter to me how I use my paints usually doesn't matter to me but um, if you're going to get these paints you're gonna to have to try them out and figure that out for yourself and see are these really going to do the things you want to do are they really just transparent or just look at a different YouTube video where someone actually went through that and did that for you uh, I, I'm I'm just not that kind of person so I'm not expecting anything wonderful about this but I will give you my honest opinion I'm not trying to make it seem bad I really am not I want these to be wonderful and excellent uh, I just I don't know all of a sudden you know I've seen some old stuff and they've they've come out and said oh look at this and all of a sudden it's terrible stuff and now all of a sudden people are starting to buy them more and all of a sudden they're wonderful and and some of the top youtubers like I said are saying that this is professional quality paint and they absolutely love it so I'm gonna give you my opinion of it just the best that I can and see how that goes so the first uh, color here the Naples yellow light that is a uh, nickel antimony titanium yellow rutile that's how you say all that um, so when we've looked at this before so I'm gonna put the first swatch down on this side I'm gonna come back in with some water here and put a little dot here just so you can see how it disperses um, so it, it doesn't well that one didn't really disperse at all maybe that was not wet enough and that could be I don't know if it was not wet enough or it, doesn't, it just doesn't seem to move it's just not really happy moving so that's fine there's nothing wrong with that so I have heard people just falsely say that if it doesn't move it's not professional quality paint that is garbage I have Holbein paints that stay perfectly still I have Daniel Smith paints that stay perfectly still in the spot they don't move around with the water and um, that does it doesn't mean that there's a lot of fillers or that there's anything wrong with the paint the paints fine it's probably just uh, th there's just the characteristic of that paint sometimes the pigments don't really move that much and some other pigments move way too much so that or too much for some people not for me I love when it moves so so this is said to be highly light fast this and and that's what they're saying they're saying that it's a light fast of eight it's also a titanate so you're going to expect this to be more opaque okay just keep that in mind this is a permanent oh, lemon yellow and I don't I despise these colors so this is not a color for me, but it's a beautiful yellow color. If you like yellow colors, this is your color. It's a beautiful color. It's just not for me. I'm not really into the cool yellows. Um, this one has slightly less light fastness, and that's that's standard for this paint. This is a uh, Hansa Yellow. Uh, let's see, the PY3 is Hansa Yellow 10G. I'm not really sure what the 10G means. But some for some, it's like an as a it's a lot of lemon yellows anyway. In all the other colors, there's a lot of lemon yellows. Some of them call them cadmium colors, but it's not a cadmium paint. So let me get some water down here. I'll try and have a decent amount of water here, and see if that moves. It doesn't. It kind of stays exactly where you put it. Again, some paints do that. Doesn't mean sometimes it could mean that there's filler in the paint. I'm not saying there's not, but in this case, I'm saying eh, it's not. It's pretty transparent. This is usually a very transparent uh, color, so that's that's how it is. It's it's a it's a nice color. It's if the, if you like yellows, that's good. I like that one a little bit more because it's a little bit more like a almost like an ochery. There's a little bit of ochre in it, even though there's not. But that's the kind of color it comes out with. And this is a cadmium yellow medium. Now, the cadmiums are semi-transparent, typically. 
This one, again, does not tell me what it is, but typically, that's a typical thing. It's a typical characteristic of that shade. That's actually a very pretty shade. I will, I'm will. i going to compare some things here later. Uh, I usually say that, and then I don't do it because I'm not good at this. But, again, that doesn't move even a little bit in the paint, uh, in the water. So that's, that's fine. But I'm going to come back and compare some of this. It looks like a very nice, uh, almost like a gamboge color with the the heavy orange down here it kind of gets a really light down here it's nice it's a nice color okay here we go permanent yellow medium this is actually a hansa yellow 65 that's what it's called that's why it's py 65 anyway it's a, it's a little bit more uh of a glowing color it's a little bit more yellow than the previous color uh, but it's a nice, it's not bad, it's not terrible, but it does have... Now here's something that I really like, but also that very confuses me. So what I'm saying here is they're telling you that it's not very light fast. And that's that's good, that they're actually telling you, okay, these are... Light, they're not just saying everything here is an 8 across the board. They're telling you this isn't really that light fast. The, the thing that kind of bugs me a little bit, though, is that it says it's a light fast 5, which the... PY65, uh, most most scales are between, uh, now this is blue wolf scale, so keep in mind, blue wolf scale goes from one to eight. The higher the number, the more light fast it is. So they're basing it on the blue wolf scale. Now, you can look up the whole thing on how they actually do that. They actually do take a piece of wool and or blue wool and they, they kind of expose it to light and see how much it just gets destroyed and then they compare that to the paint and the whole thing. So anyway, um, the point is that uh, this is all the other PY 65s are at least a good part of them. We're looking at between seven and eight light fast on most of those. Uh, now some of them will have a, uh, a light fast of six maybe as, as low as it goes. I'm not seeing anything lower than a six and this is saying it's it's a five. So there's I don't know if there's an issue with their paint. Maybe it's unstable just that particular kind that they get okay now this is going to be a transparent medium yellow and that uses py83 and py110 it's actually a very nice color a little bit more on the orange side compared to the the cad yellow medium and doesn't get as light with a little bit of water but you you never know it, it you can tune it a little bit with some extra water it doesn't really move either. It's just pretty much staying exactly where you put it. Okay, so the PY83 is the diarealide yellow. That's you. You say that word. Um, that one is is very similar to the core. We'll compare them and see how that looks. Uh, it, it can get a little bit more to the redder tone, so it can get a little bit more orange than that, even in some uh, instances there. Light fast to six, again, light fast to six, you're fine. It's a good light fastness. You're going to last for about, I don't know, 20, 25 years, somewhere around there, something like that. You can look those up yourself, but that's roughly where you're looking at. But many of these, uh, these kinds, this paints made with the 83 are uh, between seven and eight. So it just depends. They're saying theirs is a little less light fast. For that, I have to give them credit for saying that. Yes, this is a little less light fast than some of the other ones. So, but I, I appreciate that. I, I thank them for being very honest about that. The PY110 is the, oh, here's another word I'm going to mess up. It's isoindolinone. That's what that is. Iso, yep, isoindolinone. That's how you say it. So anyway, that's going to be a, a, extremely that that color is extremely light fast so I'm not sure where this is coming from uh, but that's fine they're saying it so I I'm gonna believe them I'm not calling them a liar here but that's just very interesting and we have the nickel yellow now I've spoken about this one many times before um, it's definitely not one of my favorite colors it looks dirty it's the nickel as a yellow and I, I really like this color down here. I like the light part of it um, for certain things. It's not quite like a, here, it's not quite like this lemon yellow here. It's a little bit more of a, it has a little bit more of a golden color to it, which I'm not fond of gold, but I do like this color. But up here, when it gets a little brown, it looks just dirty to me. I'm just not into the dirty 
color. Now that one spread. That one spread quite a bit, but it, it, it hit the edges, but the, the mass tone there stayed in the center. So that one spread a little bit. I know that the brush was a little dirty, I understand, but I saw it spread as soon as I touched it to the paper. Now we have an Indian yellow here. Uh, that does not look like an Indian yellow to me. It looks more like an, just like an orange. It's like a pumpkin orange almost. Some people, maybe they call that their Indian yellow. I, that's not what I think of when I think of Indian yellow at all, not even a little bit. Um, and it doesn't go anywhere in the water. Just kind of sits there, just like a lump on a log. That's all that is. Again with the PY83, and you can tell these these look very similar. But you can tell this is this is the pure pigment, the PY83, and this is mixed. So this is a little bit cleaner of a mix, um, the diarealide yellow, and uh, it, it didn't move here. Now if I did that with the core, it would shoot across the page. So there it could be that there's uh, maybe they're not mixing in like a an ox skull or a synthetic ox skull into their paint, but in, in this particular instance, that's exactly what I would say because it didn't move much at all. Okay, we have cad orange yellow now. And for you know, I expected this color to be very orange, and it's it's not. I mean, it is a yellow orange. Uh, I'm not saying it's not, or an orange-yellow. It, it could be either one. It's an orange-yellow. I could see that 100%. Nothing wrong with that. I just expected it to be so much uh, darker than it actually is. Uh, it actually moved a little bit. There's a little bit of movement in there. That's wonderful. This is a cadmium orange color. That's what it is. It's cadmium orange. It's just tuned a little bit more to the, uh, to the yellow side, so it's an orange-yellow. I guess. All right, now we're going to get to a proper orange here. This is the permanent orange red, which is uh, PO73, which is pyrrole orange. Now this does not seem to be very transparent. It seems to be a little bit on the semi-transparent side, just from what I can see here. Um, and it could be. I, I think that's how it is. So it has good light fast. I'm happy to see that. I'm going to put a little bit of water down here. See if we can move it a little bit. No, it doesn't move at all. Just stays put exactly where you where you put it. That's fine. Now I've seen people have different results with this. I'm telling you, I'm drop putting droplets on the page. I'm putting plenty of water down. It's just not moving at all. I've seen some different. Maybe I'll try when I do the painting part of it. I'll try again and try and get it to move a little bit more. You know, I want to be as fair as I can to the paints. I'm not trying to. I don't want them to to seem bad. I really don't. I would love if these were amazing paints. So here's our CAD red light and this is going to again be this is probably more opaque. Like they're gonna say it's semi-opaque I'm sure. But all watercolor they say is semi-opaque. They don't usually say it's completely opaque unless it's gouache but PR 108 is cadmium red and that's the color right there. It's got an excellent light fastness. You can use it for several different things. It just has a, a good color. It moved a little bit. There's a little bit of movement in there. So that's nice. Okay, the Chinese red, the PR254 uh, is a pyrrole red. And they're calling it a Chinese red. So you have a lot of comp uh, companies that will call it something different. Like you may have this as a, I don't know if it is the Windsor red color, but some, you know, once you have that, they pick their standard color and this is a Chinese company and they love that color red. So they're going to call it that. There's a, you know, if I was, uh, had a paint manufacturer and there was a pyro rubine, that would be U.S. red. That's what that would be. And that's what I'd call it. Or I'd call it whatever the name of the paint company is, that color red, because it's just a nice, that's what I, it's my favorite red color. So that's what I would put there, or one of my favorites. Again, doesn't move very much, it's not a problem. There is a lot of tinting strength in here. I believe this color is very staining, if I remember correctly, just from using it before. I think it is. I think, um, yeah, this is a Da Vinci red too. So the Da Vinci red is also this same shade, PR254. They use the same pigment, but 
Anyway, it's it's a beautiful color. It's a nice, like bright red color, like a ruby red color. Wonderful color. A lot of people like it. I actually like it. It's it's it leans uh, kind of like to the mid red grade. So it's not really a warm warm red, but it is. Uh, so if you let me just see if I do this here. Sometimes when you just bring it out a little bit, you can see it's a little bit more pink in the undertone. So this is just a little bit cooler, but some people use this as like a true red color, like a primary red. There's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. Okay, now we have the Cad Red, and this is a warmer red. So this is definitely something that I would not use. Uh, I'm not into the warmer reds. I usually don't use them for anything, actually. Um, and that's, listen, you use whatever you want to use, whatever colors that you think uh, you're drawn to, um, so this is a cad red. That's what it is the cadmium red. That's the actual pigment and it moved a little bit It moved a little bit there uh, In there not shooting to the edges, but it moved a little bit. So that's all we're asking for Okay for me when we get into this scarlet. I'm expecting this to be more um, more leaning a little bit more to the warm colors, but uh, It doesn't look that way on the pan. So I guess I'll have to see My goodness, that's a beautiful color. That's a really nice color. Um, I guess it, it's definitely, okay, it's definitely warmer than this Chinese red, but it's still, it's it's not that bad. So this is the Perlene Scarlet. Usually it's a little bit warmer than this. Um, this is not, usually it's more like this, but it's not at all. It's actually very nice. It's a, it's a, a little bit closer to medium, a little bit. Uh, not as cool as this color again. I like this color much more, but it's still a nice color. Not bad well, Let's get some water down here and see It didn't really move. It's it's just kind of sitting there. That's no problem Don't worry about that. All right next we're gonna go to the rose red PV 19 very popular color Yeah, that's exactly what I'd expect it to be and it didn't do anything. So, okay, that's fine. Um, and just so you know, when you, you can water this out a little bit and you can get a very nice pink color. So if you like pink, but you also want to get a little bit more, and it looks a little bit magenta to me, we're going to see what this magenta looks like compared to this, but a little bit more magenta than some of the other PV-19s that I've used uh, that look a little bit more red, but it's a rose red. So uh, it, I understand where they're coming from here. And again, I did not say it, but the, the PV-19 is a quinacridone violet. So I, I usually abbreviate that and call it a quin violet. If you ever hear me say quin, I mean quinacridone. I just don't want to say the whole word. But anyway, it's a quinacridone violet. It's a very nice color. Uh, highlight fastness, great color to use for anything that you're doing. It's much cooler than, than this color over here. But if you're not looking at this one, this is much cooler than this one. So you just have to pick which way you're gonna go. Matter red. Now when you think matter red, you think a lower light fastness. It's like that for Holbein. Uh, I, I know for sure because I've used that quite a bit, but it's also the color that's used for the anthraconoid red Daniel Smith. So the Daniel Smith anthraconoid red is the same color. This is what this one should be. Yep, it's it's really, really close. I think this one might have, I don't know, don't quote me on this, but I think this one might have a little bit more of a pink to it in the undertone uh, than the Daniel Smith version, but still uh, slightly lower light fast. Now, I don't know, I've seen uh, very high light fastness from this color. So, and I've also seen some lower light fast from the color, but, um, I think in the Daniel Smith, I think it's a little bit less, but it's not quite a six. I think it's more like a seven instead of an eight or something like that. Uh, although they don't use the blue wool scale, they use their own measurement system. And But if I had to compare the scales, I would say that. And didn't move even a little bit, not even a, a spot. So I know they're starting to move a little bit after a second. You know, they've all moved a little bit after a second. Some of these moved a lot after a second. That's the one I said right away it popped. But some of these uh, move a little bit afterwards. This one I can't, you can't just tell because I just kind of went into it with the other side. It moved a little bit, 
but not I don't think it moved that much okay this magenta here okay that's yeah okay that's much more magenta but you can see what I'm talking about that there's a little bit of that in here just a little bit especially when it was wet it dried a little bit darker which all they all are going to dry a little bit darker that's just how that works it actually drives me nuts that watercolor dries darker and then a lot of the darker colors will dry lighter we'll just pick one but anyway don't worry about that hope you don't have anywhere to go today because it's gonna take a while all right we're going back to another PV 19 this time it's gonna be a violet which is kind of what it is anyway so okay so this is more of a violet it's the same color it's the exact same color let's see if I can get this one as this one here but the exact same pigment rather not the exact same color obviously but it's just how it's processed it's very very uh, very violet it's it's I think this magenta here and this violet here are very close uh, I actually prefer the violet I believe I prefer that one over that one they're both the same light fastness uh, one's a PR122 one's a PV19 so uh, but I prefer it I prefer that one all right let's see if it moves at all now, maybe it does I mean I don't know I expected the other one I expected to move a little bit because I thought I've had that done before when I used the other paints like Daniel Smith and stuff but this one is not. You can see how transparent. It's, it's a very, very transparent color. Um, so there's not a lot of filler in it or anything like that. It's just not moving. It doesn't mean that it's a poor grade of paint. It's not what it is. It's just, just not moving. Okay, now we have a permanent violet. Wow, that is a dark color. Let me just... I'll get a little bit more water on this side over here just so you can see that it does have a very beautiful color for a purple if you are into purples if you paint any kind of florals or anything like that very beautiful color wonderful it's very dark it's it seems like it's very staining too because it's it can't get this out of the brush so um let's see how that works with this water here doesn't move at all that's fine um so this is that dioxazine violet so it can get almost black and then come out to this beautiful brilliant purple color uh, not something I usually have on my palette but still very nice you know before that was there and you looking at this one saying it's a violet it looks a little bit more purple but once as soon as you put that thing out there nothing looks purple compared to that we're gonna see if this royal purple does I don't know about that can the royal purple compete and it looks like it kind of does. It's it's definitely a slightly different color. Let's get this a uh, little bit out here so you can see it a little bit better. It's definitely a different color. But um, I don't know which one I would... If I was a purple person, I'd probably go to the darker purple just because I like darker colors. But um, you have to decide which one you like on that one. Let's see here. And it doesn't move. So this has the quinacridone violet and then ultramarine blue in it so I'm sure there's some granulation in here usually the quinacridones do not granulate but I see granulation right in here where I just added some water I can add some more let's see if I can do this a little better here so let me just put a little bit more down here I'm gonna try and just flare this out a little bit I know it's gonna go into that puddle it wasn't moving too much anyway I just want to see if I can get a little bit of more granulation in here I can see it I can see the granulation starting to come through here so you can see that a little bit of that uh, ultramarine blue granulates and it kind of adds to it here so then maybe I wouldn't use the darker purple maybe I would leave because I like granulating colors and I can't really tell that's usually the quinacridone colors do not granulate so but now the dioxazine I don't know I have no idea. I'm not sure what this would do, so you got to really test it out. I don't think I see any granulation in there, but this one, I definitely see it in here. I definitely see it up here. So now we get to both a fan favorite and a hated color because it's a little toxic there. So that's the cobalt blue, but all in all, it's a wonderful true blue color. It's very nice. This one will have granulation. I know you're going to yell at me. There's not enough water. 
I can see the granulation. I can already see it up in here, but I know you won't be able to, and then you're going to yell at me and say, you didn't use enough water. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And it didn't move at all. Now, that, that's a little concerning because when I use that color, I'm going to put it into a sky or something. You can see that grain. If you can't see that granulation, we'll zoom in later, but I think we'll, we'll make zoom in. But anyway, if you can't see that granulation, something's wrong with you. So, but it doesn't move. And I like to wet in the sky and then put in the paint. And if I just swipe that in and it just stays in a swipe and doesn't move around, I'd be highly disappointed. I didn't think any company could make me hate this color more, but they're calling it France Ultramarine instead of French Ultramarine. Why? Oh, we just want to be a little different. Listen, it's French Ultramarine, you morons. That may be a little harsh, but that's what it is. PB29 is Ultramarine. Usually the French Ultramarines are a little bit more to the red side, which is why I really don't like them. But they do granulate. I have to give them that. But it's just not a color for me. I know everybody loves Ultramarine. I can't stand it. It stays off my palette all the time. I never put this on my palette compared to the two. Look at these two right here. This is a true blue. I put this on my palette. I will never put this on my palette ever. And people say, really? You that like you hate it that much? I do. I don't know why. I just don't like it. It's not for me. If it's watered down like to this state, sometimes it's not bad. But any kind of mass tone or even the mid-tone, I can't stand that color. Now this next color is going to make me extremely mad. Let me tell you why. Because it's PB17 is a Thalo Cyan. It is a beautiful, look at that color. It's a beautiful color. The problem with it is it's not light fast even a little. I'm, I think they're pushing it on that, that five right there. I think usually we're looking at like a three or a four for, for this color here. And to call it the peacock blue, is not the peacock blue there's a peacock I, it's a little bit but not quite the peacock blue is a little different it is a very beautiful color i love this color i hate that they put it in the set because i hate when i love a color that i can't use in a regular painting i could put it in a sketchbook but in a finished piece i can't do it now let's see if it moves at all usually these thalo colors they don't move that well it's moving better than some of the other colors but anyway it's not wonderful but it's it's moving a little bit now i'm guessing this is going to be one of my favorite colors in the whole set this sky blue here because it's the cobalt chromite i absolutely love those colors yes it's it definitely is one of my favorite colors in the whole set um it's going to granulate a little bit i'm going to try and put a little bit extra water down here and make it granulate for you but it's going to granulate. It's going to be opaque, uh, or at least semi-opaque. It's in my book. It's it's pretty opaque. So, uh, and it it doesn't move a lot, but it moves a little bit. It's a beautiful color. I absolutely love it. I love putting this into skies. Uh, I would use that in a sky over this or this. Uh, I just love the the color itself. It's more of a green blue. It's a, a greener blue than some of these other ones here. Uh, close to this one but it's just so much nicer I love this color I love that it's a light fast eight I'm probably gonna keep this in the set uh, when I put it into a smaller pan which I may do I don't know if I will but uh, I'm gonna run out of this color now the thing about this whole thing is that I'm gonna love this color I'm gonna use it a lot run out of it and then I'm gonna not be able to replace it because they don't sell individual colors at least not in the US that I've found um, that's a shame because this is a beautiful color. I might put that on my regular palette anyway, anywhere else. Any other my other palettes, I might put this on it. It's a beautiful color. As we finish up half of this set, we are moving to a sea blue, which is actually just a thalo blue green shade. Um, one of the things that you'll see here, and I'll, I'll show you here in a second, is that there's not a whole lot of difference. There's just a tiny bit more in my opinion a little bit more green in the peacock blue which is why i like it more 
which is why I'm so upset that it's not uh, more light fast. So these two colors here are very, very close. I like this one more and it's less light fast so I can't use it. It makes me angry when I see it because I love the color. This one is a good color. I like Thalo Blues, the green shades anyway. I like the Thalo Blue green shades. I do not like the red shades. They, I don't like them. Uh, but it still does not compare to this sky blue. That's my number one pick right now in, as far as the whole set goes. Now a lot of people are into the Prussian blues. It's a very deep color. Sometimes it looks uh, more true blue. Sometimes it looks uh, less true blue and more uh, reddish blue. But it just depends on what it's next to is all. If you put it next to something like this here. It looks a little bit more of a, I think it looks a little bit nicer than this color here. It's only a light fast 6, which sucks. Uh, I, I do like the darker color, but, uh, and I did bring that out a little bit because I think, oh, it, 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 the water's a little bit dirty. Don't worry about that. Uh, it doesn't move much anyway. It doesn't seem to anyway. So it's just kind of staying there. But, um, but it's a very pretty blue. And I think if I had this blue... And this blue, I'd be set for a little bit. I don't know if I need any other blues, but we'll see. Because coming up here are a couple of my favorite colors in other sets. Let's see what happens here. And keep in mind when I say favorite, I don't mean favorite color overall. I mean favorite color in that shade, in that, that color family. So my favorite shades of blue. All right, so we have the Payne's Gray here. That's a very nice Payne's Gray. It's it's the, the color itself is very nice. We are absolutely loaded with pigments here. So I'm a little confused here because, uh, again, every one of the colors listed here, the Thalo Blue and then the uh, Ultramarine Blue and the Bone Black is what it's called. The PBK-9 is a Bone Black. It, it is from Animal Bone Burnt. Uh, it's like a carbon from the animal bone so some people do not like that that's fine don't use it if you don't want to some people do like that color the color itself is very pretty I don't understand why you have three pigments that are an eight light fast that end up as a six light fast I don't understand that that will always baffle me forever I just every every time I see it it just throws me for a loop I don't understand it. I don't comprehend it I guess I'm not uh, intelligent enough to comprehend it. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, but whatever, it, it's whatever you, whatever you think. I don't know. Overall, is it a nice Payne's gray color? Yes. Um, I probably would not use it though. Okay, I have high hopes for this one. When I looked at it on that color chart, which is a lie. Uh, it, it, oh no, it's a lie. Um, it did not look like this color. I'm not saying that I don't like this. I'm just saying it didn't look like this color. So, yeah, let me just lighten that up a little bit and try not to push it too far into the other color. So there you go. It does not look like what it looked like on the color swatch, but I do like that color. So we're looking at the Quinacridone Violet, the Thalo Blue Green Shade. Now there's no such thing as a PBK5, so I don't know where they're going with this. I'm going to assume they meant to say PBK6, which is a carbon black. It's it's not a it's made actually from from burning petroleum. It's, it's you burn the petroleum, you get the residue. It's carbon, and that's what it is. And it has a light fastness of seven. So the uh, these are all very light fast pigments again. Um, with the lowest one being a seven, that that violet is a seven. It was a seven up here. And they're saying it's still a 7 and probably lowering this a little bit to a 7. That's fine. So the PB-19, the PBK, uh, the, I'm sorry, the PB-15, which is the Thalo, and then the PBK-5, which is not really a color. That's not really a pigment, so I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's the 6, which is the carbon black. But it is a very pretty color. I do like it. I think it's... um. I would probably use that for my dark blue now. So if I had this blue and this blue, I would be set with these two blues and I would be able to do whatever I wanted to do. Okay, so we have a turquoise light and a turquoise deep. And I think that the turquoise light is more of the turquoise color that I usually think of when I think of turquoise. 
Um, so that's that's more of what I think of with the turquoise, and it seems to be like an opaque color. It's also you're going to see this granulate a little bit because it's that cobalt chromite. So it's this color is the same color as this color. You'll see that uh, you've seen that in other sets where they take this very pretty sky blue color. Uh, they take this color, this PV36, it looks like a greener dark blue. And then they also take the same pigment and turn it into a turquoise light or a turquoise color, though what they call a turquoise color. Usually it's called like a, a cobalt, a turquoise cobalt or something like that. Or a cobalt blue turquoise, something like that. Um, but in this instance, they're just calling it turquoise light. Uh, the brush is a little dirty. Don't worry, it's not going to go anywhere anyway. Um, now, from what I saw last time, uh, and, and I may be 100% wrong here, but uh, based on the colors I was looking at, this turquoise deep is going to look more like a teal. It, it at least it did to me on when I looked at the color thing there. So yeah, it's. it's I don't know if I would call that a turquoise. That's more green than what I would consider a turquoise. I think, and just for me, I don't know how you are with this, but when I think of uh, teal, I think of uh, a greener color like this, which is granulating beautifully, by the way. Very nice color there. Um, but when I think of it, I think of that, and it's a very pretty color. I would use this color I just wouldn't call it a turquoise for me. It would be like a teal. And then this would be more of a turquoise for me, which is more of a blue color. Although it could go either way. This could be more like a teal if, if there was another color that was more, uh, that leaned maybe a little bit more this way, uh, a little bit more green in here. But how do you, when you look at when you think of turquoise, do you think of more blue or more green? And then when you think of teal, do you think of that one as more blue or more green? So they're saying this is the the uh, turquoise deep is is actually their cobalt chromite green, which I always love those colors, the the cobalt chromite greens, and they, I just every brand I've ever seen, I've liked that color. Completely different from the core version of this color. We will go through that here in a minute, but a uh, beautiful granulation in here. Um, and, and that's a, just a part of the characteristic of what it is. And it's also going to be uh, probably um, semi-transparent or semi-opaque or however you want to look at that uh, because of that chromite. But still, beautiful color. All right, you're disappointing me here because... Oh, that is a beast. I don't understand why you're using multiple pigment, pigments to get this pigments. There's no such thing as a pigment. It's a pigment. Anyway, I don't know why you're using multiple pigments to get this this hideous. I mean, I know it's a pretty emerald green color. It's a hideous. I hate this color with a passion. I thought I had this messed up. I thought this one was this one. You're going to make me test this now. No, okay, look. Here's the thing. You have just pissed me right off. So you you... You definitely pissed me off. I don't understand this. First of all, the word, if this is, I'm not going to say what that word, how you actually pronounce that word. I believe it's supposed to be malachite, which has an E at the end. But if it's if it's not, if it's what it says here, I'm, I'm not going to say that word because I don't say that word here. So, so PY101 is a... It's a Limogen yellow. I've never heard of that word before in my life. It is a fluorescent greenish yellow color. And then you're adding thalo cyan to it. Why would you... Um, you okay, you explain to me down in the comments. If you have this color, why would you create another color from pigments that are not light fast? Obviously, you would never use that. So why would you not just use this color? It's slightly different property-wise, I guess, but all in all, it's the same thing. It's why would you use this? This does not make any sense to me. I hate both of these colors. I don't understand. You're donkeys. Why would you do that? Why would you create a color that's just like another color 
and make it less light fast by making it. It just doesn't make any sense. There's very little difference here. There's almost no difference here. I would never, I don't understand you. I don't like this color to begin with. I hate that color. It's called, I'm throwing it in the garbage, but I'm gonna now throw, have to throw two paints in the garbage because that's just as ugly. And stains just as much, by the way. Okay, so this is going to be a chrome oxide green. It's usually a color that I absolutely love. And uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting take on that color, almost black to a light green. So it's called Hooker's Green Brillite. I think it's supposed to say light or brilliant. I don't think it's supposed to say brillite, but that's fine. You can say whatever you want to say. You call your paint colors whatever you want to call them, whether I like them or not. It's a pretty color. It would maybe use it for some mossy areas or something like that. Looks like there's a little bit of granulation in here. Um, which they're supposed to be, that chrome oxide green. It's also going to be uh, opaque, or, or a little bit more opaque, maybe a, um, I don't know, I call it opaque, but maybe it's more like a semi-opaque or something like that. But once you hit that black color there, it covers everything. You can't get anything through that. So I don't know if you are aware, but Viridian is PG-18, and that is this color hydrated. So if Viridian is hydrated chrome oxide this is chrome oxide green period so but it's a very nice color very deep green i do like it uh it's going to granulate beautifully i'm absolutely certain of it and uh it's, it's nice it's a nice color this color will take their lunch money so it pants them in the yard don't worry about that let's see if it moves at all how about that let's see if it just moves in the water it doesn't do anything nothing's really doing anything right now but that's okay don't worry about it Okay, olive green is one of my favorite colors. I love olive green. Uh, in the core line, it happened to be, it's becoming one of my favorite colors very quickly. Oh, that's not one of my favorite colors. That is an ugly olive green if I've ever seen one. That should be a shame to call itself olive green. So the, the and, and I just wrote these backwards. It's supposed to have these two first. It's supposed to be look like this. It has these two first and then those two. But so, the PG-16 is a zinc green. And then this PY-12 here is a benzy yellow green shade, I believe. Um, it's usually made for, it's an ink color. So it has it doesn't have the greatest light fastness, which I guess that's why it brings down to a light fast six. But um, I guess you put those two together and then you move over to a PR-101. That's baffling to me. So PR-101 is a synthetic iron oxide red. It's baffling because I don't see a, any kind of red or brown in here. And then the PW-5, it, it, it's even more confusing because the PW-5 is called lithopone. It's a white pigment that is used sometimes mixed into gouache to give it some opacity. So there's gonna be an opaque color, I guess, uh, at least slightly opaque, but uh, this is just baffling. I don't understand the the colors here. They they don't make any sense to me at all. And that's why this I maybe that's why this color looks just disgusting to me. It just I don't like it even a little bit. It's not moving even a little bit. So anyway, it's just it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand that color. I don't like it. I think it's hideous. Right, we have a tree green. This is supposed to be a tree green. Again, I hate that color. It's ugly. It's, uh, well, I mean, look, not for other people. Some people like spring greens. This is like kind of leaning in that direction to a spring green where it's a lighter green with a little bit more yellow into it. Um, maybe if it dries, it'll, it'll change a little bit. I know some of these did. Like this one shifted a little bit. I still love this color. I definitely love that color. We'll go through them again. But this one here is just not making sense to me either. So this one's taking basically the phthalo green yellow shade and adding all the other colors that it did to this one. Let me get this a little bit more in the... Okay. So anyway, it's taking this uh, phthalo green yellow shade, which I can't stand. It makes me want to vomit. And then uh, puts these other colors with it that it did with here. So... 
it just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they would create these colors out of these pigments. Although this one is a light fast eight all of a sudden when the other ones were not, but it doesn't make any sense. Well, maybe it does maybe because the, I guess the main pigment in it is that green, that PG six, the, the PG 36 is very light fast. The PG 16 is not at all. It's, it's light fast, very low. So I guess it just brings it up a little bit with some of the other colors, but um, th I think this is going to shift and I, I wouldn't use it and this one here I wouldn't use because I hate it. Okay, permanent green. I am not a permanent green. These these green colors are not for me. So this permanent green here, oh, it's just terrible. It's just, I just look at it and think why. I mean, if you like to paint with neon colors, then I think maybe you'd like that. I do not like that even a little bit. It's now it moves a little bit in the in the water. That's fine, but I would never use that. It's probably a little opaque. As a matter of fact, I'm sure it is. Most permanent greens are. Again, it has that phthalo green yellow shade. I can't stand it. Now the PY3 is the Hansa Yellow 10G. The PY74 is an Iralide yellow, which I've seen in a few different uh, a few different companies have that Iralide yellow. Um, I believe Windsor Newton uses that uh, pigment for certain things. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on it. Uh, I will put the link to the pigment database below so that you can look up some of these this information. And it says it's very light fast because of the phthalo probably. All right, so this one has everything in it except for the PY, uh, no, except for the PY3. So except for that Hansa yellow, it has the uh, thalo blue, uh, thalo green, yellow shade, and also the iralide yellow, and that's that's this here. And it says that it's very light fast. However, again, I'm going to say that this is um, uh, slightly opaque from what I'm seeing, and uh, it would definitely do that if you if you put it in a mix. It probably wouldn't mix very good with some of your other colors. That's what happened a while back. I did some kind of landscape and I had my Holbein paints and they have these kind of colors in them and I mixed them into it and it made them so opaque. I had to go back over and uh, put the ink lines back in. And of course, I, I don't like those colors to begin with. So that's terrible. Now, if I, if I go back to here, if I just look at these, um, this is not as bad as I thought originally when I first put it down. It did get a little darker. I still don't like any of these greens. They're, they're just not me. This green is me. I love that green. And I don't like these either. So as far as greens go, I'd have to mix my own for this set. Now this is an interesting color. It's called a lemon sienna. I've never heard of that color in my life. I'm guessing it's just a lighter yellow sienna. And that's what it looks like. It looks like a more yellow sienna. So this is a yellow iron oxide and it's, um, According to that that pigment database thing, it's it's a dull reddish yellow to a yellowish orange brown. But I'm a yellowish orange brown, uh, maybe maybe barely, but I don't know if I would classify it that way. It looks more like to me, it looks more what a Naples yellow would look like instead of this color here, Naples yellow. Uh, well, that's Naples yellow light, so I'm not gonna you know I'm not trying to yell at it. But anyway. But this, I'm going to, it would be nice to see what it looks like compared to the Naples yellow. Because that's what I think this looks like to me. And I, I here's a yellow ochre color. And that's, that's, that's a proper yellow ochre color. Um, oh, I forgot to do the water thing here. So let me put down some, some water stuff here. That you can barely see it. Very low tinting strength with it. Um, it very low light fast. Uh, with it so I wouldn't use it anyway but that's okay and I'm not trying to be a snob when I say that I just don't want my stuff to fade that quickly and this would fade so if I was doing a sketch well that popped pretty quick that was good that was a good pop right there and that's what you want a good yellow ochre for sure because if you're using these um, anytime you do any kind of landscape paintings with watercolor a lot of times they'll put this into the sky even if it's very 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 light and you want it to spread very thin and you want it to spread very quickly so that you can come back with some blue and not turn it into green 
so you just uh, it's it's difficult to do sometimes but if it's very light and spreads quickly and spreads a little thin then you can do that without getting that greenish tone in the sky so uh, very very important for that color this did not move at all again I probably wouldn't use that okay here's our here's the Naples yellow and that's that's very opaque um, I can see someone calling that a Naples yellow it's it's a little bit yeah it's a little bit thicker than maybe I would have liked for a Naples yellow but it's almost like a if this was that color but this thick it would be like a one brill from uh, from Holbein if it was a little bit more this color but this isn't quite a one brill either because that's a thick color and this is not thick at all this is just very low tinting strength terrible so the thing that's really confusing me here is both PY42 both yellow iron oxide and uh, this one is virtually non-existent and this one is very dark and more like a proper yellow ochre then you come over here and you have a PBR24 so you have a, a chrome antimony titanate which we've had in some other brands before uh, looks much more orange than a Naples yellow should to me this is just not what I would call it this color is what I would call Naples yellow just a little bit darker just a little bit darker uh, this does not look like a Naples yellow to me some people may say no you're crazy that's exactly your Naples yellow and I would say okay that's fine with you but that's not what I would call a Naples yellow don't quote me on this but I don't think Daniel Smith uses this pigment and that's what I'm used to is Daniel Smith paint mostly so I just I'm not used to seeing that color that's a, that's a strange color for me all right raw umber is next oh I didn't do the water thing I'll do that uh, that's a strange raw umber uh, that's a very strange raw umber I would not call that a raw umber maybe the paints wrong I know that it's in the proper category here but that's that's definitely not a raw umber to me let me get a little bit of water down here I did not do this one and didn't move anyway and let me get some more water here and do this one yeah it's kind of strange and everything's pretty much re-wetting pretty well it's not as easily re-wettable as some of the other brands but they're rewitting just fine they're coming down full strength on here no problem um, that's a strange color for a raw umber for me this PBR7 is a brown iron oxide I don't know I'm gonna compare to other raw umbers and you'll see how different this is we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here down to the bottom of the barrel here this is an umber that's not an umber either oh you donkey does that look like an umber to you I I don't think I have these two confused that doesn't even look like a burnt umber to me I, I don't know so does that look like a brown iron oxide and then a synthetic red iron oxide I, I don't know I, I just it looks very strange to me maybe like a like a burnt sienna I want to see what the burnt sienna looks like now it, that's like that's even a little bit too light for or too reddish for a burnt so too orange for a burnt sienna I don't know well, I have to see if I mess these up let me see so this is no this is the red ochre this is exactly what it is so I didn't mix these up I thought maybe oh if I put this out on the paper maybe it'll be more brown and maybe that's the red ochre nope this is the red ochre here the Pazuli red ochre which by the way I absolutely love that that color that's synthetic red iron oxide and that's a beautiful color one of my favorite uh, pigments of all time in any paint is the red iron oxide so I'm just gonna just let's see if I can get a little bit more water here see if I can just uh, get some granulation here or something but yeah this is something that I would use in in a palette anywhere um, it's just a very pretty color I like it a lot I think that's a that's a beautiful beautiful color it dries a little flat um, that's strange that it dries flat but the color itself is beautiful okay we have a Van Dyke Brown uh, man 
again there's there's the umber there's the umber it's here but it's not I checked the I just checked the tin that's the Van Dyke brown to them I would say that that I mean it's PBR7 I get it but I'm I'm just saying I don't think that's right uh, that's a that's an umber to me let's go burnt sienna now and I would either call that a burnt umber or a Van Dyke brown this said now of course the the information on here is wrong it said PB7 obviously it's not a PB7 it's a PBR7 but that's not what it said on the pan and I'm I'm very baffled right now I don't think that I understand what's happening now look some companies mix up their colors oh that moved a little bit in there that was good uh, some companies mix up their may mix up their colors or mistake stop Alexa stop I don't know why that happened anyway Oh, they're always listening and yeah, don't worry about that so this is definitely this colors mixed up yeah better not hear you say anything again okay so this is I don't know this is different for me um, I would say umber and I would say either Van Dyke Brown or a burnt umber um, this is definitely not a raw umber I think they mixed up the labels I think that's what they did I think one of these either this one or this one is a burnt sienna this was the umber this was the um the van dyke brown and i think they just completely mixed up the labels on them which could happen i'm not saying that they can't the the quality control needs to be fixed a little bit oh, i'm scared with the next one we got a burned brown let's see how that works a burned brown oh that's not right at all well usually you know i mean you can name things whatever you want to name them um usually the burned colors are oh, I'm not not even on the screen okay usually these burned colors are redder when you when you have a burnt it's and this is I know it's not burnt sienna it's burned sienna and burned brown don't worry about how they do things but anyway usually you'd say it's more if it's burned it's more red so the umber is is probably this one I don't know I don't know anymore well maybe the raw umber is this one and then the regular umber is this one and then this is the burnt sienna over here and then I don't know I don't know I, I'm not sure how this is working here I mean that's that's sepia that's what that is and and sepia is umber that's what that's what it is the the sepia is, is umber just with a little bit of black in it but this doesn't have the black it's just still as dark though I, I don't know I'm very confused here and that's not hard to do you can confuse me very easily why do I keep skipping doing the water part and just I go right to the don't worry about it wow that didn't come off very strong at all let's see that's a little better I was just it was just had the to dry of a brush that's all so let me get this one let me do the water part here for this burned brown not what it is at all anyway okay let's try the ivory black put some put some yeah that popped a little bit that's good so the ivory black here is for the uh, it says PBR 9 Oh boy, which is uh, copper ferrocyanide, but I'm going to say it's actually PBK9, um, which is the bone black. This is the, the charred bone, and the, the charred bone, the reason, way you can tell that usually is that this is a little bit more brown. It's a very warm black. That's how you can tell which one is which. Usually that, or for me anyway, they call it ivory black. It's bone black. That's just what it is. Uh, tends to be a little bit warmer the coal black will be uh, more of a true black or should be uh, more of a true black I don't know why don't we try that and see what happens so this should be yeah it's more of a true black here a little bit smoother at least it's working out I'm gonna come to so it's not entirely a cool black uh, it's cooler than the ivory black but it's more like a true black it's not cool it's not warm it's just a true black 
once you water it out a little bit here, you see it gets a little bit warmer, uh, more towards the brown side, but it's, it's not terrible. Let's put some water down here. There you go. And didn't move. I put a lot of paint in there. You know, this is the, the, the PVK black is the lamp black, which is always known to be a little bit smoother when you lay it down. It, um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't kind of, that, that's not really, in my opinion, the ivory black is not really black. It's more like a very, very, very deep brown or a very, very, very dark brown. Uh, deeper than the you know the regular umber colors and then the coal black or the uh, the lamp black is usually more of a smooth true black color and you can get that that if you need something to be completely black flat black you could you just get this color and it would work now if you don't want you know people always tell you don't use black in your watercolor just ignore people they're dumb um, but if you mix this with a blue so if you take maybe some of this indigo or some of the Payne's gray um, or some of the sky blue here and mix it into that black uh, or some of the purple and mix it into the black it looks more natural that way when you mix it something into black to get a black color because then though any of the lighter spots on it will show like a little bit of color reflection and it just looks more natural that's what natural shadows look like but if you want something flat and you don't care about shadow, leave it alone. Just do what you want to do. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do that. All right, let's see how opaque their titanium white is. And that is pretty opaque. I, I have to say that. That's like gouache level. Well, I got to wait till it dries. But uh, first putting it on there when it's wet, that's like gouache level black right there, or white right there. It just got covered pretty good. Okay, just quickly, I'm going to go through these a little bit closer. Now this Naples yellow, not a huge fan. I liked it a little bit in the beginning, but after I got to the end, I said, no, it's not good. Uh, don't like that color at all. Some of these, there's a lot of repetition in these, these paint companies. I, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight the, uh, yellows that are kind of either leaning a little bit warm, a little bit leaning cool. There's only one cool yellow. That's the only cool yellow in the whole thing. Everything else is leaning more, uh, more orange or, or brown, whatever. But there's, there's a bunch of them. That's a lot for one set. There's a couple more, what I would call truer orange right there. Um, this is even leans orange. I wouldn't call that a red at all. That's a, that's an orange. There's nothing wrong with that. I love orange colors. I do. I want to see, let's take a look here. So first let's look at the Rosa Gallery. Let me back this up just a little bit. Okay, so first let's compare. This is the Rosa Gallery here. This is the golden yellow compared to this. This is a little bit more orange on the top here, but pretty close. That's pretty damn close. See, the difference is, and, and this is where I'm going to show you the new Gamboge also. Um, see how this gets lighter down here, more yellow down here, and this is more orange. Whereas this is orange and just gets lighter orange, but it doesn't get more yellow. So it's better compared to this. This is the Indian yellow and the cat orange yellow. And then this is the golden yellow. So it's, it's closer to these here. If you look at the two PY83s next to each other, very close, a little bit more orange on the core. This is the core samples now. So there's a little bit more orange here than there is here. But I want to get back to this color here. Okay, so I know the new Gamboge looks a little bit darker here but it, it lightens up, you can't really see it here that much, but it does lighten up to a light, like a bright yellow here. And that's kind of what this color does. So this is good in my book. I like it. I don't like that it's only a light fast six though, when this one here is gonna be an eight. So I'm not gonna switch it out, but I can still use this in this palette. If you wanna compare the Nicolazzo here to the, uh, this is Daniel Smith. Um, this, uh, it gets a little bit lighter yellow, but also it gets a little bit darker brown. So uh, compared to this one, I do like this one better. Uh, they're both light fast eight. They're both permanent light fast. That's fine. Okay, now this here is raw umber from Core, which matches Daniel Smith just fine. Um, and I think that this uh, looks very close to maybe, well, maybe this one. Okay, so this 
little resembles kind of this color here, but this is says that it's Van Dyke Brown. This is a Van Dyke Brown from Core compared to this Van Dyke Brown. For, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's not adding up here. Now this is saying it's an umber here. This says this is the umber. It says PR101 and PBR7. Um, but the PR101 here is a transparent brown oxide. So uh, more like a more like a sienna, like a burnt sienna. But the burnt sienna it's saying is over here that that's burnt sienna. I don't think that that's burnt sienna at all. I think there are many things that are just different. You can see the quinacridone red here versus the rose red. It's virtually the same thing. You get that light pink out at the bottom, just like you do down here. Very similar, very close. I know they're a step away from each other, but this scarlet here, this is a pile of scarlet here, and this is the scarlet from this uh, particular one. You almost have to move that a little bit. This is a little bit more warm in color than this is, but it's still, it's a pretty color. It's okay. Uh, I would say this is a little bit closer to this. Nope, oh, move it on here. Okay, I think this one is a little bit closer to this one, uh, being that it's, uh, let me put it down here, see if that helps. That doesn't help at all. Anyway, this one here I think is closer to this than it is to this, even though this is the scarlet here, and this is pyro scarlet here. Now I want you to look at these two here. This is the core olive green here, and this is the, uh, whatever it is, the Paul Rubens olive green here. I do not like this color even a little bit, um, this has a PR-101 in it and a PY-184 in it and a PG-7 in it. So it has multiple pigments in it. It's just a lot nicer of a color. I use this as my only green on my new palette, which I will show you soon. I'm going to do another video on these and show you my current palette, well, how I'm using it and what I'm using. But this is what I use now for my only green on the palette. I say only green, but I'm sure I'm going to change that sometime and put another green on it. But right now, that's my only green on the palette, and it's beautiful. I love. I use this color all the time. I add it with a little bit of uh, the Payne's Gray or the Indigo, and I can get a nice uh, perylene green out of it. And it just, I can add a little bit of uh, one of these colors up here, one of these yellow colors up here, and it, it lightens it up a little bit. So you can change it however you want. But this is a hideous color. I do not like it at all. This one I absolutely love. Okay, so that was the swatching section of the video. I'm going to pick some of these and I'm going to put them into a drawing, into a painting, and let's see how that goes. But let me know, what are your favorite colors here? Which ones did you really like? Which ones will you use a lot of if you had this palette? I'm going to reserve my final opinion till after I do the painting on whether or not I think these are professional grade or not. If I think that they're just like a stand-in, that they're almost professional grade or if they're comparable to maybe a student grade, or what they call student grade, like a Cotman. There's no such thing as student grade. Anyway, like a Cotman or something like that. Obviously, there's some quality issues. I think that the paints are labeled wrong. They don't have the names properly on there. Um, there's not. They're not telling me if it's transparent or if it's opaque or if it's uh, if it's staining or not staining. They're not giving me a lot of information marketing it to me but not giving me the information to figure it out so they get a couple of points off for some stuff and they get a couple of points for some other stuff i love that they're being honest with their light fast ratings and telling you hey look this one's not going to be light fast so if you're just putting a sketchbook it's fine but if don't put it in your final art to sell it because it'll you'll be ripping people off and you don't want to do that okay let's get into the drawing Okay, so I had no idea what I was going to draw with this. I also had no idea what colors I was going to use. I even used colors that I absolutely hated, that I would never use ever again. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to pick colors at random. I'm not even going to look at it and see what colors I end up with. And that's what I did. At the very end, I used a couple of other colors that I paid a little bit more attention to. But that's just because of the very end, you'll see that. But anyway... Before I give you my final conclusion, I need to mention a few things here. Now, I know that I am not as good of an artist as many of the top YouTubers have already given their thumbs up on this particular paint, and they raved about how great these are. I know that they have painted for many, many more years than I have. I know that they've used many more brands than I have ever even heard of in my life, so keep that in mind. 
Take my opinion for what it is. It's my opinion. It's based on my experience, and that's all that it is. I'll give you the good and the bad, and then my final thoughts about the whole thing. But also, please take notice that there are four or five different generations of these watercolors. They have been on the market for a very long time. I don't know why they would t uh, still sell old paint, but this could be a previous generation and not the latest and greatest version of the paint. But don't blame me. If you sell Generation 2 and you're still selling Generation 2, when you have a Generation 5 out there, that's not my fault. You pull that stuff off the shelf and you make it unavailable and you or you just sell it out. You don't replace it. And by the time five comes around, the only thing that should be left is like four and a half. Anyway, I'm in manufacturing. I know that. That's what we do when we have a new product. We just say, okay, there might be a distributor with some old stuff in there. But when they get, they, they sell that out. When they get the new stuff, that's all they sell then. So what I'm seeing is there may be multiple different types of versions out there. I don't know which ones these are, so just please keep that in mind. Now, let's start with the good parts of this paint. Are they very pigmented? Yes. Some very strange pigments and combos, but really, most of them are normal pigments, and they carry good pigment load. They're bright, they're vibrant. You'll see in the painting here, they go, they work fine. They, they just, they look like professional grade watercolor paint. Are they less expensive? Yes. Well, I, yeah, I want to make that little caveat. So they're, they're less expensive, but they're in line with some less expensive professional brands like the Rosa Gallery or the Dark Days or the Lucas Aquarell or something like that. They're, they are less expensive than some of the bigger ones like Core, Windsor Newton, Daniel Smith, M, even M. Graham, who's, they're mildly, they're on the mid-grade, but uh, as far as price goes, not, not professionalism, but... Uh, so yeah, they're they're right there. Are they light fast? Most companies, you you notice that they offer mostly light fast pigments, and then they have a few that aren't. They just still offer them, even though they aren't as light fast. And most companies do that. So if what they're telling me is correct, then yes, there is many light fast pigments here, and they're they're on par with everyone else. Do they have the qualities of professional paints? Absolutely. Some of the paints are staining, some are non-staining, some are transparent, some are more opaque, some granulate, others don't. So they have all of the variety that I would expect from any professional brand. Do they act like professional paints? You need to adjust how you think of this question. And I, I, I say that because I hear so many uh, artists, especially on YouTube, they say some weird stuff about things. But basically you have to adjust your technique to the paint you're using. And I'm gonna give you an example of like watercolor paper just cause it's easier for me to, to, to explain it. So you have hot press watercolor paper. Some of that hot press watercolor paper, it's very easy to lift on. You put the paint down. So not only are you competing with staining and non-staining pigments, you're looking at uh, paper that also either holds on to the paint or it allows you to lift it. So you're dealing with both of those. So if you have hot pressed watercolor paper, some of it lifts very easily. If you like to lift highlights and you like to, to uh, do that kind of stuff, or lift clouds out, wonderful. You can do that with some paper. Other paper holds on to the pigment. So and people say, oh, I don't like that because that's not professional. Yes, it is. Because if you're a glazing watercolorist, you want the paint to stay on the page so you can glaze over it without lifting it up off the bottom. So. There's, it's just you have to use your tools the way they're meant to be used. So is this does this act like professional watercolor paint? Absolutely. It doesn't shoot across the paint uh, the page in wet washes. It doesn't do that kind of stuff. But a lot of paints don't. I have Holbein that don't. I have Daniel Smith that don't, and some do. But I have paints from all different brands. Sometimes they move. Sometimes they don't. These in particular, most of them didn't move, but some of them did. As the, the paint sat there for a little bit, it moved a little bit more than when you first put it in there. But it's okay. The, and other paints, like Core, they shoot across the page. As soon as they touch water, they just follow that whole trail and fill it up. So it just depends on the properties of your paint and how it's formulated. That For the Core, it's that synthetic ox skull that helps it do that. And for other paints, it's the ox skull they mix into it. But 
just yes they do act like professional watercolor paint okay let's get to the bad this is what you've all been waiting for i'm sure first of all terrible absolutely the worst marketing materials i've ever seen You've been marketing to these uh, these particular paints to the U.S. for years because you know we spend money like we have holes in our pockets and in our heads. But you need to make the materials understandable to your target market. We need more information. So I didn't see any of the transparency or granulation effects or or um, staining effects or I didn't see any of that stuff in your literature. It just, it did tell me the pigment, which is good but I need more information. And the reason we need more information is because we find every reason to whine like little babies. And I've seen some pictures of their tubes that do have some more information, but not on these pans. So if these pans are not current, remove them from the marketplace and give us the pans that are current with the proper material so we can understand it. Now number two is that there's either bad quality control or a very strange paint name choices. And that could lead to people buying paints they don't even want. So for example, for me, earth colors are very important. If I bought an umber or burnt sienna and I got these colors that are in this set, I might disregard the entire line because these are not the colors that I think of when I think of those colors. Not that they're a little off, they were way off. So either they don't know how to name the paints properly to so that they can relate to other brands or it's just poor quality control. They, they listed them wrong. They labeled them wrong. And that's also a problem. You know, it could lead to like a buyer's remorse instantly. And other people may disregard it. I know I would. And believe me, Westerners also carry grudges. And we don't let anyone live anything down ever. For generations and generations, you will be held accountable for these mistakes forever. Yeah, if you don't believe me, watch the news sometime. Now, I have seen some two paints swatched out by other YouTubers. Their colors didn't match my colors, which it brings me to the next issue, which I'm going to mention here, which is inconsistency. Like I said, some companies change formulation of their paint colors, but then they don't still manufacture that same paint with two different formulations. Right now, if I would just go buy another set of these online, I don't know what colors I'm going to get as an umber or burnt sienna because I've seen them different in other things. So you, you don't have one color for tubes and then change it for your 48 half band set and then change it again for your 24 half band set and have all different colors with the same name in the same brand. You don't do that. It's very frustrating. It could be a series issue. I understand that, but I have no idea because they're not labeled. Now, while I said that they were cheap, they're not as inexpensive as some people claim. Close to some other companies like the Rosa Gallery, like we were just talking about, but not like so. I mean, this set, if I didn't have a coupon, it was 30% off. It was a clip coupon for 30% off on Amazon, so I got it for $40. I had $30 off, not 30% off, it was $30 off. They were $75 for this set. You can buy other brands that are the lower cost professional brands for $75 for the half pants. That's not super cheap and oh, so amazing. That's It's right on par with some of the lesser expensive brands. This is, I know this is a personal quirk here, but I like when companies offer full pans alongside their half pants. I don't like half pans. I like to be able to use flat brushes and angle brushes and things like that. That's what I like to use. So I know it sounds nitpicky, but I like full pans and I didn't see any of these in any of the sets that were advertised as full pans. Another thing that absolutely pisses me off is I cannot buy individual paints. That will stop me from buying a paint brand. If I can't buy the individual paints because I may find a few colors that I like, like in this set, I'm going to find probably a dozen or so colors that I really love. I'm going to put them, and not that I, I think that they're so terrible. I, I don't. I, I A lot of these colors I really like. We went through that in the swatching. So I'm going to find some of those colors, put them in a smaller pan, uh, and just kind of use them in a smaller set for just the colors that I like. I'm going to run out of one and not be able to find a replacement and be very pissed off that I have to spend another $75 for a tiny little half pan just because I ran out of that one. 
Something else they do is they create colors with way too many pigments that have no light fast qualities. I don't understand that. The peacock blue is is what I love that color and it's just the light fast is terrible. The the fake thalo green. Oh my goodness. So big points off for making two thalo greens in my book. And this is my video, so I get to write this book. So, But I, I understand, like some companies have a thalo green and then they have a viridian. I like viridian more than thalo green. I can't stand it. Viridian I can use a little bit better. I, I it does, It's not as staining, it's not as harsh, and it's you can use that color to mix with. But this other thalo green that they made, it's just as much garbage as the other thalo green. And it's not light fast, so I don't even know why you'd use it. Here's something else I noticed. Unlike the Rosie Gallery, who put the tabs under the stickers, so they have stickers that cover their pans too, but they put a little strip of tape underneath the sticker so that the sticker doesn't stick to the paint. This company does not do that. There's points off for that. And who knows if for some reason some glue didn't dissolve into that paint. I have no idea. I don't really know when it was put on. It looked like it was put on a little wet because there was paint stuck to the inside of the sticker. So that's definitely points off for that. Lastly, and I cannot stress this enough, Malibu Barbie does not live here. They should offer the pen in either a, a neutral color or multiple colors. Now they do have two 24 pan sets. One is blue and one is this disgusting pink color, but they, they're different sets. So if you want those colors, you gotta buy it in that tin. You can't get the blue tin colors in the pink tin color. You can't do that. So maybe like get like a, um, have like a, a blue and a, or a pink for the same set or have an orange or a green or a sand brown or a black or something. But don't just have one color that people are stuck with and if they don't like the color, they might not buy the whole set just because of the color of the tin. So keep that in mind. All right, in conclusion, in my completely biased opinion, because I'm me, and I think the way that I do because of the experiences that I've had and the things that I like to, in, to use and the things that I enjoy, are these professional watercolor? Yes. Bottom of the professional barrel watercolor. Would I recommend them to someone who asked me, listen, I want to start with a professional starter watercolor set. I want them to be professional, but I want to spend a little less money. Would you recommend them to me? Not if you stuck my pinky toe in honey and jammed it into a fire ant mound. Not at all would I recommend the, I would stick with Rosa Gallery or the Dark Days or the Lucas Aquarell and, and, I would stay away from these, unless for some strange, absolutely absurd reason, the tube paints are completely different than the pan paints, which does happen sometimes, I know that, or maybe it's a different series. Other than that thing, I would say that's my opinion. If you want to reject this opinion and call me a moron for even suggesting you could do better because some other YouTuber said you should use these, or... None of the negatives that I've mentioned even bother you at all and they don't mean anything to you. Then for those people, I do have an affiliate link down below. Don't forget about that. Or on the side or wherever YouTube, all of a sudden, I know I went on one of the things. I went on my desktop. I think it was still, everything was down below just like normal. I was on a different device and all of a sudden everything was off to the side. And it was, you couldn't find where the description was. I don't know what YouTube's doing to me, but... Don't worry about that, it's down there. And if these paints are your favorite paints and I have just called your baby ugly, don't blame me. Blame these people popping up on the screen. They pay me for these completely one-sided reviews. So thumbs up the video if you thought this was way too long to learn about paint you'll never use and you think you should have been doing something more creative and all this time that you've just wasted has ruined your whole day by taking up so much time and, and I, I have the audacity to not even feel a little bit sorry about it because I don't. But sometimes you waste time on things that don't matter. Okay, if you would like to join our community, go to illustrationsbypete.com. You can come in, you can put your own artwork on the site and promote it. You can find some inspiration in the free reference photos. You can just use them however you want in your artwork. You do not need to credit me. 
or you can come into the forums and talk to some people and maybe give some advice and maybe find a little bit of information that helps you. So come check us out. All right, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next one.